Yojimbo is a 1961 film directed by Akira Kurosawa. It's a story of an unnamed ronin, or masterless samurai, who comes to a town by chance and gets mixed up in a gang war. The small town is divided into two factions. The ronin tells a man that the town would be better off with both gangs dead, and decides to stay and earn a little money playing both sides. When the ronin is asked his name, he looks out the window at a mulberry field and says, Kuobataki Sanjuro. This translates as 30-year mulberry field. In other words, he is giving an alias. In the sequel, the ronin uses a different surname but keeps his given name, Sanjuro, suggesting that only his family name is the pseudonym. This spawned another series of films starring another drifter, most commonly called The Man With No Name. Get three coffins ready. Uh -huh. A Fistful of Dollars, created by Sergio Leone, is a story of a stranger who stumbles onto a town with two families vying to control the population. Leone was unable to gain the rights to create this remake, but as I explained in a previous episode about Nosferatu, sometimes directors just don't care and roll the dice to see if they can get away with it. A Fistful of Dollars was held up in court with its release delayed for years. After a settlement, it finally hit the screens. That led to two sequels, For a Few Dollars More and The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Arguably Eastwood's most famous role, outside of Dirty Harry, would have never existed without Yojimbo. But that's not all. Django, another western adaptation of Yojimbo, was released shortly thereafter. Django has become a kind of stock cowboy character, like Milos Gloriosus from Greek theater. He has appeared in dozens of films, many unofficial. The difference between a canonical Django appearance and a ripoff has blurred greatly. Yojimbo has been told and retold numerous times. There is a terrible adaptation called Last Man Standing, starring Bruce Willis, and the fantasy action film The Warrior and the Sorceress. The fact that Sanjuro has been adapted into a man with no name, and a man who can be inserted into any story, is either a testament to the character's flexibility, or his lack of depth. But Yojimbo is certainly not a shallow film, as I will try to explain. The visuals in Yojimbo, and absolutely no surprise for a Kurosawa film, are striking. Once again, Kurosawa uses movement as his primary tool. Like this scene, with a crowd, and this one later on. This double profile shot draws the eye. In this scene, Sanjiro and the old man show themselves to be opposites. The old man is emotional and worried, whereas Sanjiro is calmly pondering what to do next. This switches to this layered shot, with elements in the background, midground, and foreground. Borrowing from the western genre, Kurosawa uses wide-angle shots for the showdown scenes, making one think of Old West gunslingers about to face off. This shot is actually in pan focus, meaning that even though Sanjiro is far away, he is still in the camera's focus and still plainly seen. This is another great shot, giving us objects in left, center, and right fields, all in focus. This shot, immediately afterwards, uses deep space and selective focus. Deep space is staging over multiple planes. To always know when the audience is seeing Sanjuro, the actor does this shoulder shake over and over during the course of the film. Kurosawa often had his actors repeat a particular motion. Kurosawa's love for westerns notwithstanding, he had little interest in purely white hats versus black hats depictions in his films. He wanted to portray heroic characters, but not characters that were servants of the government or a system of control. Seven Samurai famously had Kukuchio call the honor of all samurai into question, defying expectations of the samurai film. His use of Shakespearean standards, complex characters with confused emotions and internal conflict, decorate his filmography. That doesn't always mean that his films or his characters were morally ambiguous. Rather, Kurosawa aimed to create individualist protagonists, rather than heroes always in service to the government. This comes out of the post-World War II political climate. The evolution of the samurai in Japanese cinema mirrors political and social change towards a less hardline nationalism. Much in the same way that American cinema began to portray its military differently around the same time, Japan began to portray one of its cultural representatives, the samurai, as more human and more flawed. Japanese critic Tadao Sato once said, with defeat in World War II, many Japanese were dumbfounded to find that the government had lied to them and was neither just nor dependable. During this uncertain time, 
Akira Kurosawa, in a series of first-rate films, sustained the people by his consistent assertion that the meaning of life is not dictated by the nation, but something each individual should discover for himself through suffering. Sanjuro is one such individualist. In the beginning of the film, he chooses, seemingly at random, which path to take, suggesting either would be satisfactory. When he arrives at a town with two rival factions fighting over power, he plays both sides to earn money. Let's examine this. Within the narrative of the film, this might seem troubling because one could interpret this as Sanjuro not having any moral standards or that he is not willing to take up any cause except his own, but I don't think that's exactly what we're seeing. This is more of a statement about individuality and unwillingness to bow to powerful forces, especially if said forces are corrupt and amoral. Is Sanjuro immoral for not choosing sides and collecting money from both factions? Or is this a statement by the protagonist that says the gangs are immoral? and do not deserve an honorable, loyal, and honest bodyguard. Maybe Sanjuro's original motives are amoral, and he just gets the better of his adversaries. Maybe he only seems like the hero of the story because he is so much more skilled than the others. Maybe he's only a puppet master, at least in the beginning, but the mercy he shows towards the end and other actions disproves Sanjuro's complete amorality. Perhaps Sanjuro simply has the clarity to see the world in its self-destructive glory. Kurosawa gives no easy answers. Yojimbo is sometimes mistaken as an escapist action movie, but there is more going on here than just a ronin casually chopping up townspeople. Sanjuro watching from above while the townspeople murder each other is Kurosawa's statement on the whole of the world. Saber-rattling ruling parties who inch closer and closer to each other, usually out of fear more than anything else. Towards the end, Sanjuro finds a young man who wants an exciting life, spares him, and tells him children shouldn't play with swords. This may as well be directed, pointedly, at the audience.